An electric vehicle goes off-roading, flips upside down, and bursts into flames. We've learned a lot since I put out my first videos on Let It Burn. So here's the big question. Should we still let it burn in 2025? You found Stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter and automotive engineer researching EV batteries since 2018. On June 16, 2025, Chesterfield County Fire and EMS responded to a call for a vehicle fire on Walton Bluff Parkway. Now, this is in Virginia, and this SUV had clipped a cement culvert. It rolled over and caught on fire. Crews responded to find an overturned electric vehicle with active fire. Now, take a listen to this video. It's pretty easy to tell that this wasn't your average car fire. Now, in this case, the battery was absolutely in thermal runaway, but let's start off with the basics. If you show up to an EV fire and the high voltage battery, it's not on fire, it's going to behave just like any other car fire. Knock it down, get it done, but if that battery's in thermal runaway, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. You might have noticed the popping sounds in that last clip. It's hard to describe, maybe popcorn popping or fireworks off in the distance. 4th of July is coming up pretty quick. Think about that sound when the grand finale happens in the next town over. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think it sounds like? Ultimately, when you're hearing the popping sounds, you're hearing cells venting. Each pop is a cell rupturing, and once thermal runaway starts, it becomes a chain reaction. You're not stopping it by knocking down the flames. And here's where we have to ask the real questions. Do you try to stop it or just let it burn? Now, to be clear, let it burn doesn't mean let the entire vehicle burn to the ground. You can still put out the cabin fire, all the plastics, the rubbers. There's no need to let them burn. You're still protecting exposures. You're still controlling the scene. But when the battery box starts venting flammable gas, sometimes the best strategy is to let those gases burn. Take a look at this image. Without the cabin fire, those flames are pretty clean burning. Sure, you could knock out that flammable gas fire, but then you'd be left with a whitish gray gas smoke coming from the vehicle. Those gases can travel a decent distance, and when you're in an enclosed space, the lack of fire could actually make things worse. Because if those gases build up, you're at risk for deflagration. In this case, once the cabin fire was knocked down, the battery gases, they continue to burn. And honestly, that's exactly what you want. Those lazy, open flames are burning off flammable vapors in a controlled way. Knock that fire out too early, and you might just push the problem down the road. Now, could cooling help? Possibly, but only if you can get water to the right place. In this fire, the vehicle was upside down, and there were visible holes in the bottom of that battery pack. That gave the crews a real opportunity. If you can get water inside the battery pack, crack the nozzle open, allow that water to flow in, it might help you out. If not, surface cooling, it might help, it might not. It's the frustrating thing about electric vehicles. The construction of that battery pack, it makes a big difference in how effective or ineffective that cooling might be. That's why there's no one-size-fits-all solution here. Every EV is a little bit different. The battery shape, the size, the chemistry, the pack protection, the thermal management, it all matters. This time, they had great access. They were even able to bring the drone team in to keep an eye on things. Next time, the wheels might be pointed in the correct direction, making access to that box even more difficult. One thing I do want to mention, don't worry about using foam on an electric vehicle fire. All it's really doing is wasting money at that point. It's not going to help put the battery fire out. And that's why training's critical. Chesterfield's been ahead of the curve with EV battery training since 2021. By the end of this year, all firefighters in Virginia are going to be required to go through similar training. That's a huge win. So back to the original question. Should you let it burn? Sometimes yes, but only once you've done everything else. Put out the cabin fire, protect the scene, and what's left is just battery gases burning in a really controlled way, a pressurized gas-fed fire. Let them burn. It's not passive, it's smart, and it's safer. We're still learning, and every fire gives us more information. This one was a great example. Stay aggressive, stay smart, and stay safe.